Hello everyone and welcome to Education Plus. Today we are going to discuss an important theory of learning given by Pavlov and that is called Pavlov's Classical Conditioning Theory of Learning. It comes under the subject learning and teaching and for those who are totally new to this channel this is the fifth video on this subject that I have made. To refer to the previous four videos you may go to the playlist section where I have made a separate playlist covering the subject learning and teaching. Now let's get started in understanding Pavlov's classical conditioning theory of learning. Before that it's important for us to understand the word conditioning. What is conditioning? A simple form of learning involving the formation, strengthening or weakening of an association between a stimulus and a response. This is one definition. Another definition is a process of behavior modification by which a subject comes to associate a desired behavior with a previously unrelated stimulus. Now, when I read these two definitions or when you yourself read these two definitions first, it's going to be very confusing for you all to exactly understand what is this association between a stimulus and a response. As of now, in simple words, I will define conditioning as the creation of relationship between a stimulus and a response. Now I'm leaving the explanation of conditioning here itself and moving on to an example because that example that we are going to study next will make conditioning much clearer to you all. Because that example is actually an experiment performed by Pavlov that ultimately became an important part of Pavlov's conditioning theory of learning. So let's have a look at the example and I'm sure after that you will be clear about what conditioning is. As of now, all that we have in our mind is the creation of relationship between a stimulus and a response is conditioning. So this is the example or rather the experiment before conditioning. First have a look at this one. You have a pet here, a dog, okay? Unconditioned response when it is provided with food is that it will salivate. Okay, salivation will be there. So this is unconditioned response. So unconditioned here or before conditioning means that you haven't yet created any relationship yourself. So next thing is before conditioning. This is the step two, okay? The first one and this is the second one. So here you have no response when you just ring a bell. So it is neutral stimulus means it is not going to create any response to the dog. It is not going to salivate or it is not going to react. So this is before conditioning. Now we are going to understand conditioning. So this is the third step here. Number three, during conditioning. So here in conditioning, what we are doing is we have food and we have the dog as well. But here, when we are going to give food to the dog, we are going to ring a bell. Okay, so we will have food in one hand. In the other hand, we'll be keeping a bell which will be ringing. And when the bell rings, dog will notice that we have food and it will salivate. It will want to eat the food. So this is conditioning process. Why is it called conditioning is? Because we are actually creating a relationship between a stimulus and a response. So what is the stimulus? The stimulus here is bell ringing, which will create a response in the dog that will be salivation. Now this stimulus that we are creating is actually being associated with unconditioned stimulus, which is food. Okay. So next what happens is after conditioning means after we have created a relationship between a stimulus and a response, the fourth step is going to be you need not have the food. If you just ring the bell, the dog will start to salivate because it will think that when someone is ringing the bell, it is time for it to get the food. So here actually, even without seeing any food, just when it hears the bell ring, it will start to salivate. It will want to go for eating because now it is conditioned. Conditioning here is there has been a creation of relationship between stimulus and response. So this is called conditioning. This is the experiment by Pavlov. So here we understand what conditioning is. 
Previously, I just told you that it's the creation of a relationship between a stimulus and a response. So here you see a real example of a stimulus and a response. So here we understand what conditioning is and what is the experiment performed by Pavlov. So now we will define conditioning in a better way. So now we define conditioning as a form of learning in which a neutral stimulus becomes a conditional stimulus. So here we see that in conditioning, we are converting a neutral stimulus to a conditional stimulus. Also, we understood through the experiment, we understood what is unconditional stimulus, what is conditional stimulus, what is neutral stimulus. And now, having understood Pavlov's experiment, now we will see the educational implications of Pavlov's classical conditioning theory. The first implication, what are the takeaways from his theory? Fear, love and hatred towards specific subjects may get created through conditioning. For example, a teacher with his or her defective method of teaching and improper behavior in the classroom may be disliked by learners. The learners develop hatred towards the teacher's subject, teacher's subject due to the learners develop hatred towards the teacher's subject due to the teacher's behavior. Now this is what often happens in our junior classes where if we actually find ourselves comfortable with the teacher or if we admire the presentation of the teacher, then we are ultimately going to like the subject. If we are not going to get comfortable with the teacher or if the presentation of the teacher is not so good enough, then we are not going to like the subject. So this is actually a direct implication of Pavlov's classical conditioning theory. The second implication, the good method and kind treatment, okay, here we should have of, of a teacher can bring desirable impacts upon the learners. The learners may like the boring subject because of teacher's role. So the good teaching method of a teacher can create conditioning for students to like different subjects. So now we see the third implication of conditioning theory. Teachers are able to apply classical conditioning in the class by creating a positive classroom environment to help students overcome anxiety or fear. Pairing an anxiety provoking situation such as performing in front of a group with pleasant surroundings helps the students learn new associations. So this is the third implication. And then we have the last implication here. When a teacher want to teach a cat, okay, to primary school students, for example, then he or she shows the picture of the cat along with the spellings. So the teacher will hold the picture of a cat, okay, or he or she will draw the picture of the cat in a board and then will teach the spellings, will teach that it is a cat. Now, when teacher shows the picture at the same time, he or she spells out the spellings. After a while, when only the picture is shown, the learners spell the word cat. So next what happens is, first the teacher shows a picture of a cat and then tells it is C-A-T cat. Next what happens is, the students get so much conditioned with the picture of the cat that when they see the picture of the cat, they start pronouncing or they start even spelling out the spelling of cat automatically. Now this automatically happening influence is nothing but conditioning. Okay, so these are the four implications of Pavlov's classical conditioning theory of learning. So this becomes an integral part of the subject learning and teaching. And this is also one of the most common questions in the examination when the subject is learning and teaching. So with this, we complete Pavlov's classical conditioning theory of learning. I will be making a next video on another theory of learning soon and will be uploading it in this same playlist. So this completes our understanding for this particular topic where we covered important topics like what is a conditioned stimulus, unconditioned stimulus, neutral stimulus, what is conditioning, the experiment that Pavlov performed and then the educational implications. So this completes our video. Thank you and stay tuned for next videos where I'll be covering other important theories of learning.